Hey, I'm Kane, and today I'm going to walk you through how I built this shower. Let's go. Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you all the reasons why you might want to build a shower. But for me, I have two little girls. We're going to do a lot of winter travel. We're going down to the snow. We're doing all that. We want that comfort and that privacy showering inside with the girls um, instead of outside. I mean, I'd be fine for an outdoor shower and more space inside, but we got the girls. So I was like, we've got to build an indoor shower, make them comfortable. So what do you need to consider when building and researching the shower? Number one, the location is the biggest thing. You can't move forward until you know where you're going to put the thing. So you need to check underneath the floor and really see what's going to work and if it's going to work in that spot before you can really decide on a spot. Then I would start looking into the shower tray. Are you going to customize one, like get one made, make one yourself or buy one? Personally, I'd found one on eBay for 180 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. And I looked everywhere trying to find this size, 900 by 700, fit exactly what I wanted. And for me too, I was putting it over a lot of stuff underneath. There is like a massive aircon unit under there. There is a metal rail right there. And another metal rail right here. So I really needed the shower waste up this end, like way up this end. That was my challenge in looking for one and I finally found one with the shower waste in the center, right up this end, so it worked. Next would be your plumbing. What shower are you gonna use? What mixer are you gonna use? Because those things need to go in the wall cavity, especially the mixer outlet. It's like governed, like my mixer said, the wall cavity could be anywhere from 50 to 70 mil, and it would work. Like 50 mil being the minimum, you have to make your wall that thick. So what shower waste are you gonna use? Is it gonna work under the floor? And what sort of pipe are you gonna use? I looked into the John Guest stuff. That's pretty much what I was basing all my research off. And then when I went into Reese Plumbing, they talked me into using shark bite. You see the little, little shark symbol there? Super cool. They're sort of similar to John Guest fittings. You got your pipe and they just literally push in and then there's teeth in there that bite and then it cannot be released. He told me they literally put this thing in there because apprentices were sticking their fingers in there and then couldn't get them out. So really sturdy product, a lot better than John Guest in my opinion. I think they're a lot more robust and sturdier uh, and a lot more ease of use because you're just cutting and pushing in. If you make a mistake though, you do ruin the fitting and you'll have to buy it, cut it all out and buy a new one because it cannot be removed. Yeah, Shark Bite was a really good product. So make sure you think about your plumbing. Now you need to think about your materials as far as your framing, your ply, like your wet area materials. Do not use tile. It's all good for like a little feature here and there, but you wouldn't go tiling up the whole shower. It would weigh so much and all the vibration and the bumps and everything, eventually those things are just gonna crack. The grout will crack it will leak, it'll fall off. There's a million wet area products out there, 10 times better than tile. Like I said, all good for a little feature or something, but not for an entire shower. For me, I used aluminum composite paneling. It's two thin aluminum sheets sandwiched like a plastic, like nylon material, and it's about three mil thick. It comes in all different shapes and sizes. It's really strong, really good. They pretty much use this stuff like on the exterior builds of like caravans and, and like enclosed trailers and stuff. Um, you can find like anywhere from like 80 to to $100 a sheet. I paid about $100 a sheet, but I bought it from a signage company because I couldn't find a supplier out where I am. I did, however, get from Bunnings the little, like the little plastic sheet internal corner like joiner. They sort of shape like this. You basically just slot your sheet in there and it makes it waterproof and another big one you want to consider is the door 
what door are you going to use because you need to build around that door so you need to know what you're going to use personally i've built a few bathrooms and you need to buy all your pieces before you start the project it's the same with this like go and buy your shower and your weight and your mix up buy your pan buy your materials that you're going to use get your floor waste get all these things before you start the build that way you don't have to piece it together as you go like you you've you've made the plan and now you just build the project so Bunnings also has wet area paneling you can find that you can find it elsewhere from Bunnings but it's quite expensive and yeah it's cool it comes in like different patterns and profiles like you can get that subway tile look in the sheets but they're very expensive and I'm sure they're good but they're very expensive so I went with the aluminium composite panel and I'm gonna actually use the offcuts as like whiteboards and I'm gonna stick little little offcuts around so that we can use it as a whiteboard so the process I went through putting all this together basically once I had the plan put together and I had my shower and I had my location and I had all my items then I got my shower pan now the shower pan I had I found on eBay for a couple hundred bucks um, I'll link all the products down in the description and this one was designed to sit in like a bed of sand so like the actual where you stand on the floor or like where you stand on the pan was like proud from the edges so I I flipped it upside down, I got a straight edge and I just glued some packers all, all around underneath to make it all, to support, to support the middle of it basically. And oh, first what I did was I drilled a pilot hole in the floor roughly where I thought it was going to go. I went below and I found that pilot hole that I drilled and I measured off underneath and then came back on top and marked out with masking tape everywhere that there was something underneath that I didn't want to hit. So like the chassis rails and you know any piping or anything that was down there that I needed to avoid, I drilled a pilot hole, I went underneath, I measured off the pilot hole, and then I came back on top, measured off the pilot hole, marked it with masking tape all the way around. And that way I could see what was underneath on top as I positioned my pan, drilled, drilled the 90 mil bloody hole for the shower waste. So now I've got the hole drilled, and my shower pan is in position. Um, I didn't actually glue the pan down uh, or lock it in. I framed around it nice and tight. And the floor waste, when you screw that in and sicker, sicker and screw that in, that helps lock the pan in plus my framing. So now, so now our pan's in place and we're framing up. Being, being a bus with curved, like curved ceiling, and curved walls and a, and a window there it was pretty hard to like just build a straight frame that was gonna you know span across all that so knowing that I was going to ply the frame I sort of basically got the bottom plate of the frame down and then the the middle rail or stud um, and then from that I measured off and I made my plywood panels so I drew this up measured a shitload of little points and then we cut her out Let's go, first try. And then I could screw my ply in. Then I basically cut my framing in and screwed it to the ply. Screwed it all into itself too, made it strong, but I didn't have to try and make the frame first because I had the ply wall there and I could build the frame into the ply wall. And once it was complete, it was strong, but obviously it would have been a lot harder to try and go around the window and everything before I had that ply on. So that was my little method to getting that done. Now I've got the frame up, we've got the shower pan in, the frame up, and we're moving on to the plumbing rough in. This is where you want to plan out where your plumbing is going to go. So for, I drilled two holes through the bottom plate on the shower side wall, brought my pipes up, mounted my shower mixer uh, and plumbed that all that in then went from the shower mixer up to the shower outlet where the water's going to come out now i have the shower head on a rail so i also planned where that rail was going to position so then you know planned out where everything was going to go once we had all that locked in sorted we had to test it make sure that there was no leaks before you go closing up the walls 
So now the plumbing's been tested, everything works, there's no leaks, we're ready to seal up the walls and sheet, sheet our shower. Basically, for me, I put, where my mixer was, I had to build the cavity out to be 50 mil. So plan for the shower, this will have a plywood piece on this side and then I can glue my sheet to that. The reason I've done that is because I actually needed I needed the thickness, I fixed that to the back of the plywood and then I actually need to build it out enough for my mixer and shower head to sort of fit on there. This side, I'm not going to waste the weight on putting another sheet of ply here. I'm just going to batten it out with a little bit more framing and then the sheet can glue to the frame. Sheet will glue to the frame there. And then we have like a timber top going on this which I will I'll cut into the window and I'll cut in nice and neat around that, probably just do a nice neat seal. And then obviously all around here. And the reason I built this up, well so when you're in here, it's sort of just above your hip, keep your privates private. Sheeting the shower was a challenge because those little plastic inserts gave me an incredibly hard time. Um, I, I would pop one on, I made a plan to how I wanted to get the sheets in, but then Come on. So this little piece in here, I put it on this panel as I slipped it in, right? Thinking I could lever this one in. And then this one, obviously, it's open here, so I should be able to feed it in. But, I allowed five mil in every area for it. And it just seems that it wasn't enough. I could not get it in for the life of me. I even tried like cutting a bit of an angle on the panel at the bottom there. Used the crowbar to like lever it in. S sort of got over it and just didn't give a shit about that trim. But whatever, it looks good for my house. Oh wait, this is my house. So moving on to this one. Yeah. That was a hard time. Make a better plan than I did for that. Anyway, once we glued all our sheets in and fought that battle, um, I basically put in another panel at the front edge here and sheeted that. Uh, actually, before I put that panel in, I made my door, I measured up the door, I sussed out the door completely, made a, like, so I knew what I was doing with the door, how it was gonna go in, and then I'm, put it in place dry, measured off it, made this panel up and then installed it, then glued and installed the door and got all that sorted. Yes. So now we're sheeted, the door's in and we're pretty much ready for fit off. So now we're just screwing on all the, we're just, we're just popping on the mixer head, we're pop, putting on the, uh, putting on the shower head, installing the shower head rail. Uh, all that, putting in the shower waste and silicon sealing the floor. Right, this one's gonna hurt. I had a feeling this would happen. I just tested this fitting. This is like for the outlet for the shower hose. Screwed it on and it landed like eight mil short. So I'm gonna need to take at least 10 mil off with a grinder. And I peeled that back too, great. Also made this nice little window sill. I put about a two degree angle on it so it falls back into the shower. I cut it in as tight as possible to the window without touching the window. It's about a millimeter off. And then I sealed it just with some leftover clear lacquer from when I sealed my kitchen bench. Then I just glued that in. It fits really snug. Completely sealed that and sealed the floor, sealed the ceiling, made it look pretty. Now it's ready for a party. Shower party. Who's coming? Now my favorite YouTubers are King and it. Craig and Amy from uh, Scotland. I think they're Welsh. They are legends. Now they have the sickest bus traveling around uh, Europe and, and it's pretty cold in Europe. Now one thing that th I saw they did and I thought we gotta do this. We ran the diesel heater into the shower so we could make like a little dry room. Um, I pretty much just grabbed one of these like extender pole things. So when we're not using the shower as a shower, we can 
throw that pole up and hang our jackets, pants, whatever you want in there, gloves, uh, and make a bit of a dry room after shredding on the snow. And maybe we can even get like some nice warm boots for the morning. Ooh. Yeah, you, you, you really need to make things multifunctional. If you want to see more of the multifunctional spaces I've made into this bus, then hit subscribe, follow along, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace. That's it, the end.